names fade away. Thank you, Jesus. Let all the other names fade away. Until there's only you, let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Say that with me, let all the other names. Oh, no. 
Jesus. There's power in this house. There's power in the blood. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes, I'll obey you, Jesus. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Jesus is the one. The victory.
yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship 
announcement. I'm sorry to break this spirit, but parents, we have, if you would take your kids over to the fellowship hall, they would actually sign the permission to actually do the Easter egg hunt that we're going to have during this service. So if you would take your kids over to the fellowship hall, we would appreciate that. Amen. 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 Now let's bring the spirit back in here. Bring the spirit back into this house. If you would please stand for the invocation. Amen. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, oh, we want to give you all the praise, dear Heavenly Father, because you died upon the cross. But dear Heavenly Father, what's so amazing is that that third day you arose with all power. And for that, dear Heavenly Father, we want to give you the praise. We want to give you the thanks. Each and every one of us. Because if you hadn't have did that, dear Heavenly Father, we wouldn't be here. And so we want to give you that praise, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless each and every one this year. Oh, my goodness. They look so beautiful, dear Heavenly Father. But it's because of you. You have provided them the strength. You have provided them the guidance and the directions, dear Heavenly Father. So continue to give us that praise, dear Heavenly Father. Continue to actually watch over us so that we may give you the praise. Because you are the Almighty. You are the first. You are the last, dear Heavenly Father. Bless those, dear Heavenly Father, that are watching, dear Heavenly Father, that couldn't be with us in this house, dear Heavenly Father. But be with them wherever they are, dear Heavenly Father, because you hold the hand of everyone, dear Heavenly Father. So, dear Heavenly Father, as the pastor comes in, dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you decrease them, dear Heavenly Father. 
bring your word, dear Heavenly Father, that you have provided for him, that it will be uplifting for us, dear Heavenly Father, that we will take that. And as it says, that as we receive the word, that we will go out and teach others because there are many that are out there that are lost. So, dear Heavenly Father, we ask that if there is anyone that needs your blessings, dear Heavenly Father, bless them, dear Heavenly Father. Bless them. Dear Heavenly Father, we need you each and every day, dear Heavenly Father. We ask, dear Heavenly Father, that you actually bless the tides, that as we bring them in, dear Heavenly Father, that they may multitude, but then we will actually take them and actually uplift your word, dear Heavenly Father. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Let us all say, Amen, Amen. amen.
you don't feel welcome after the spirit of the Lord has infiltrated this place, then I'll just have to go ahead and do the welcome. So, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this blessed Resurrection Sunday. Welcome to worship to everyone who's here in the sanctuary. It's so nice to see. It's, it's a lot of beautiful people here. Nice to see you. And we don't want to forget those wonderful people who are online who weren't able to be with us today. But we invite you online worshipers to please remember that we're just a few steps away next Sunday. Come and join us is our prayer. But for today, even though you're at home, even though you're in the sanctuary, we should be free in the Lord because this is a most special day that I can think of. The day that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. He was resurrected. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. For the last 1,600 years, Christians all around the world remember the last days of Jesus' life during the week of Holy Week, which was last week. We got a chance to study and to see how Jesus spent his last few days on this earth before he went to glory and gained the victory for us. So I like to call today Resurrection Sunday. I know it's Easter too, but Easter is, um, Easter has been a little bit more commercialized. It's a little bit more about the Easter Bunny and how in the world the Easter Bunny gets into the, I don't know. I don't know that one. <laughs> but, um, but we are here, we have assembled here today to just give praise. And I'm telling you, every song they sang just was right on the money, wasn't it? Ooh. Right on the money. And just a reminder that, um, you know, Jesus laid in the tomb for two days. But John 28, 18 says what the choir has been singing, that on Resurrection Sunday morning, Jesus got up with all power in his hands. And I just want to read a little, some, uh, some few lyrics from one of my favorite songs, Because He Lives. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon, your pardon too. Um, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives, he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Welcome. is hosting a men's prayer breakfast at the Panera Bread in Clinton, Maryland. So come join us for some good food, good fellowship, and good breakfast. But let me get back to mine. The Fort Foot Children's Ministry would like to invite all kids ages 5 to 12 to Children's Church, held every first and third Sunday at 11 a.m. in room 27. And while the adults of Fort Foot are celebrating Easter Sunday, let's give the kids something fun to do too. The Fort Foot Children's Ministry is also holding an Easter egg hunt on Sunday, April 9th during the 11 a.m. service. There will be candy and games, so bring the young ones out for a fun event. Hope to see you there. Good morning, Fort Foot family and friends. 
Once again, we would like to thank all of our monthly food distribution volunteers. We also extend a special thank you to those who responded to our request for Spanish interpreters. Those who came out last month provided much needed assistance with communicating with our Hispanic friends. But because of the changing demographics of the Fort Washington area, we are still in need of more Spanish interpreters to help us support the ever-growing Hispanic community. Let's continue demonstrating our thing for 2023. Loving God like never before by volunteering for our next food distribution on April the 22nd. Volunteers are needed Thursday, April the 20th, Friday, April the 21st, and Saturday, April the 22nd. We look forward to seeing you there. Good morning, Fort Foot Baptist Church family. The Fort Foot Baptist Church Scholarship Committee is accepting applications for the David C. Austin Scholarship for the 2023 through the 2024 school year. All high school seniors and current undergraduates who are active members of the fort are eligible to apply. In addition, children or grandchildren of an active member of the fort are eligible to apply. This year, we're offering scholarship for those who are pursuing a trade occupation requiring an enrollment and a certification program. Additional eligibility guidelines can be found on the application. Please go to the church website for more information. The deadline to apply is before midnight on May 7th. Don't delay. Hello, Fort Foot. We have a special announcement for our pastor's 33rd pastoral anniversary. Hello, my name is Reverend Marcietta Washington. And I'm Brother Larry Washington. And we are so excited that we are about to embark on the celebration yes. season for our pastor and first lady's 33rd pastoral anniversary. Wow, well, 33 beginning... years? Wow, I must have been a little baby when pastor first came to the church. <laughs> yeah, 40 years old. <laughs> okay, anyway, so the services will be again Wednesday, April the 19th at 7 o'clock p.m. We will have our services via the Zoom link on our church's website. On Friday night at 7 o'clock in the church sanctuary, we will have a tribute celebration in music and in song. Featuring a special MC, that's me. Uh, anyway, and then we will culminate with services on Sunday April the 23rd at both the 7.30 and the 11 o'clock services. We are so excited because at 7.30, we're going to have Reverend Gary Davis yes. of the Grace United Baptist Church of Washington, D.C. And then at 11 o'clock, we'll have one of our very own from way back Spain. in the past, yes. Reverend Peter Spann Spain. from Corona Baptist Church in D.C. So mark your calendars for April 19th, 21st, and the 23rd. And we'll see you all there. Praise the Lord, Church. I am Reverend Clarence Hill, an associate minister at Fort Foot Baptist Church. Congratulations to our pastor and first lady on yet another year of service to God and to his people. As they have blessed us this year, we have an opportunity to bless them with a love offering. If you choose, you can make a love offering to the pastor and first lady by using the envelope that's in your pews, or you can write a check or even online and simply place pastor's anniversary in the memo. Praise the Lord.
on Calvary's cross. The price was paid. In his side. Just for me. Oh. Crucify him. That's what they shout. That he died, died for you, died for me, died on another man's cross, 
dying for another man's sins. But early Sunday morning, he got up. you on this Easter Sunday morning, you, Resurrection Sunday with the Jesus joy. If God has been good to somebody, can you just give him a wave offering? We feel his presence in this house today. I greet you with the Jesus joy. It's so good to see all of you home. We appreciate those worshipers online, but something happens when the people of God come together in person, yes. when we can. Yes. It's been a minute. Yes. Old COVID thought it had us, but resurrection power still yes. prevails. Yes. 64 children in this fellowship hall. Every time we come to worship on Sunday morning, we re-celebrate the resurrection. But this day, this day is the actual special day, resurrection Sunday morning. Thank this anointed praise ensemble because we're in the third watch. This praise team, this praise team had the nerve and audacity to show up at 6 a.m. Then they came back at 7.30 a.m. And now we're on the third watch, and they probably hope I don't preach too long. If I do, it's not my fault. It's that Jesus has been so good, I just can't help myself. A few amens will try to accelerate. Y'all give a few amens, we'll try to push. Get this train to the station. Be so kind if you were to meet me in Mark chapter 16 as we celebrate this great day of resurrection. My heart is happy. My soul is glad. I pray for strength from on high. The Gospel of Mark, written primarily to the Romans, but to all of us, reads like an action-packed motion picture, portrays Jesus as a tireless servant, going from one ministry vineyard to another to meet the needs of God's people. It reads as follows. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Siloam had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long right garment, and they were affrighted. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter, that he goes before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said unto you. And they went and out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. 
And she went and told them that had been with him, and they mourned and wept. And they, when they were, had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that, he appeared into another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it to the residue, neither believed they them. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers and doers of his holy and precious word. Eternal God, we come at this third watch, asking now that you'd be so kind to send down your power from on high, that your word might have a life-changing impact on all of our lives. We'll be careful to give your name all the honor and the glory, because truly it all belongs to you. It's in that wonderful, master's amazing, powerful, resurrected name of Jesus that we pray. All of God's family said amen, amen. and bless the Lord. With the help and prayers for a few moments on this blessed Easter Resurrection Sunday morning, I want to preach and teach from the subject, the power of the resurrection. The power of the resurrection. We have been blessed to live, to move through yet another Passion Week, another Holy Week, that as you know began on last Sunday we call Palm Sunday, when Jesus rode triumphantly into the city of Jerusalem, and they cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Save now, save now. He had to come in Passover. Zechariah 9, 9 prophesied that he would come riding on a donkey. He came to fulfill a prophecy, but he also had to force the hand of the Jews to crucify him because the Passover lamb that he was had to be crucified at the Passover. Then on Monday, he cleansed the temple for the second time, platted a whip, beat out the money changers of doves and goats, and beat them out of turned over tables. And they said, by what authority do you do this? He cleansed the temple and cursed the fig tree. The temple needed cleansing because it was a metaphor of the people of Israel. They were internally corrupt and externally fruitless. The fig tree normally bears fruit at least twice per year, but there was no figs of the tree, only leaves. He wants you and me also to be fruitful. Tuesday, he met with the Pharisees. They were questioning his authority. He said, tell me, whose baptism was John? They were hushed because they said, if we say it was heaven, he said, then he would say, why don't you obey? If we said of earth, so they said nothing. He said, I'll tell you what, since you won't answer me, I won't answer you. Then they came and troubled him again, said, should we give tribute to Caesar? He said, bring me a coin. Whose image is on the coin? They said, Caesar's. They said, well, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's and render unto God that which is God's. We want to render unto Caesar because it's almost tax time. And sure we want to render unto God in the tithes and offering that which is God's. Then he had to deal with the Sadducees who did not believe in the resurrection. That's why they were sad, you see. They said, if a brother dies and has no children, the brother's left should marry his wife, and if this should happen seven times, whose wife would she be in the resurrection? He said, why are you asking me questions about the resurrection when you don't even believe in the resurrection? You do error not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. Hush! Wednesday, we're told, was silent. But then on Thursday, we see him in a garden called Gethsemane. It was the agony of Gethsemane. Luke chapter 22, verse 44 says, Sweat dropped like blood after he prayed, Lord, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless. Yeah. Doctors would tell us, according to the hematologist, there's a rare medical condition called hematidrosis. When the body is under extreme pressure and duress, Somehow blood oozes and seeps out through the skin without being cut or wounded. He was in agony, knowing that Calvary was beckoning, knowing that crucifixion was soon to come. He said, Lord, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. They carried him before Pilate, gathered a band of soldiers of the governor, 
put a scarlet robe on him, draped with a crown of 72 thorns, representing the 72 members of the Sanhedrin. Can you imagine 72 thorns pressing down on your brow? Took a stick, beat him on the head, bowed the knee, said, King of the Jews, plucked out his beard, buffeted him with the fist. All of this happened before he ever got to Calvary. Then made his way down through the Via Della Rosa, down by the fortress of Anton that heard the great built in memory of his friend Mark Anthony. Finally climbed on up the Golgotha's hill, called the place of the skull. Hung him high, stretched him wide. Hung up for our hang-ups. He said, Calvary was all about love. His heart was bigger than this. Crucifixion originated with the Persians. They had a false deity named Amaz, who thought the earth was sacred. Therefore, they deemed that no criminal should be executed flat on the ground. So to put him on a pole started the act of crucifixion. The Carthaginians picked it up. The Greeks, Greeks carried it further. But the Romans expanded it. So much so that by the time Jesus was about to be crucified, Rome had already crucified 30,000 men alone in Israel. It was, according to Tacitus, the historian, it was the most horrible way for one to die. It was for the worst of society, but they were doing the worst to heaven's best. Scholars said that evil had been escalating up to now, but now at Calvary, we see the pinnacle of evilness, but we also see the love of Jesus. Sometimes they would even cut out the tongue of the man being crucified because the pain was so excruciating. He would spew out venomous profanity. But Jesus did not spew out venomous profanity. He spoke, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Matter of fact, when he died, earth started quaking. Moon began to hemorrhage and drip away in blood. One of the centurions said a dangerous thing for his own life. Surely this man was the son of God. There was a thief on the left talking about, if you be the son of God, come down from the cross, save yourself and others. When you're dying, that's no time to be iffy. You need a no so faith. But there was a thief on the right said, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. When we call him Lord, we are saying you are the creator. We are the creatures. Mold us and make us to be all that you want us to be. While dying on a cross, still concerned for his dear mother Mary. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. The first three words on the cross were spoken during life. But the Bible said from the sixth to the ninth hour. Jewish time began at 6 a.m. So the sixth hour was 12 noon. From 12 noon to 3 o'clock. Darkness, there was a miraculous darkness over all the earth. That's when Jesus was bearing all of our sin. He that knew no sin became sin for you and me that we might become the righteousness of God in him. At about three o'clock, he cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabetana, which is to say, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Reverend Brown told us on, on Friday evening that he was forsaken but not forgotten. Yeah. God had to turn his back on his son for a moment so he would never turn his back on you and me. Finally, he said, I thirst. How is it that the ones who made the Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, and the Nile River thirst? How is it, Reverend Robinson said, when living water thirst? Mark Matthew said, blessed are we that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for we shall be filled. Tell us that it is finished. In the present tense, what happened in the past impacts the present and the future. See, in biblical times, when you would complete a work as a servant, you say, Telelestai, it's finished. When an artist would paint a masterpiece and sign his name, he said, Telelestai, it is finished. When grocery shopping and the bill was paid, at the receipt said, Telelestai. An empty cross and an empty grave was a receipt. Telelestai. All that was needed for your and my salvation was finished 
it is finished. No more sacrifices of ghost lambs and bulls. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain. Oh, but he washed it. Finally, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. It was almost in the Sabbath. The Sabbath law said no man could die on the cross on the Sabbath. Here was the problem, family. They were more concerned about the laws of the Sabbath than they were the Lord of the Sabbath. Can I get a witness? They were so hung up on their traditions, the Sabbath laws had become a burden and impossible to keep. You couldn't hardly even breathe on the Sabbath. They had to hurry up and get Jesus off the cross because the Sabbath was coming. Somebody here today might be having a good Friday moment. Look like everything is going wrong. Everything you touch lately turned to mud. Nobody's showing favor. Money's getting funny. Friends acting few. It's just not going well. It's a good Friday. But I got good news. Every good Friday, followed by early Sunday morning, Saturday, 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 must have been discouraging. The one they had hope would redeem Israel, put them back in power. It did. All of our hopes have been dashed. Pain seems to be the all of the day. What are we going to do? But the good news, something happened. Early Sunday morning, he got up. I said early Sunday morning, he got up out of the grave with all power in heaven and in earth. Talking about the power of the resurrection. Thank you, Lord. Mary Magdalene and the mother of James and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might anoint him. They thought he was dead. Mary, Mark tells us again here in verse 9 and 10, it was Mary Magdalene, the one whom he cast out seven devils. He told us that once, when God repeats something in close succession, it must be emphatically noticed. Seven is the number of completion. I mean, she was completely, totally wicked, but he had the power to cast out seven devils. She was greatly delivered, and now she was greatly devoted, but not enlightened. They had come to give it proper burial. They would anoint the body with spices during biblical times. we see the witness of the resurrection. How is it that, why is it that, women were the last at the cross and the first at the empty tomb? Somebody said, we are indebted to godly women throughout all of Christianity. Can I tell you for a moment why this day is so important? Resurrection is the heart even the aorta of our Christianity. If there was no resurrection, all of our preaching, all of our teaching, all of our Christian living would be an exercise in futility, a senseless religious talking to the wind. Much to do by them, but because there was and is a resurrection, we got power, we got a hope. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. They went to the tomb early in the morning to anoint him. The first day of the week. We don't say anymore after the day that Saturday and Sunday are part of the weekend. I've never seen a calendar where Sunday was not the first day of the week. As in priority. Can I get a witness? They got there. Mark says there was a man sitting, but he really was an angel. Sitting on a rock. And they said, who shall roll away the stone from the door from the sepulcher? For it was very great. Graves in Babylon was a cave, about a six foot opening at the door. So it took about a two ton rock to fill the space. Perhaps, my brothers and sisters, by way of application, you may be carrying something today that feels like a two ton rock. And you can't move it, you can't slide it, you can't move it, you can't. But while we're trying to work it out, God is already. Worked it out. Can I get a witness? If by some chance you're dealing with something that's more than you can handle, too heavy, too weighty, wear you down, blocking your blessings, 
zapping your joy. I stopped by to tell you on Resurrection Sunday morning, give it to Jesus. He can move it. Matter of fact, there was a great earthquake, said the Bible. He dispatched an angel who moved a two-ton stone and sit on it like a park bench. God can move it no matter be it a person or an issue. God is able on Resurrection Sunday morning to move it out of your way to get your praise on so your life can go forward. He said unto them, Be not affrighted, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, but he is risen. He is risen. He's not here. Behold the place where they laid him. The Bible said, and they went and told them that had been with him, and they mourned and wept. These were not strangers, pagans or heathen. She went and told the disciple that she had seen Jesus was not there. And they mourned and wept when they should have been rejoicing. They went heard that he was alive, but they believed not. We see the witness of the resurrection, then we see unbelief in the resurrection. They went and told another two who told the residue, and they believed not. Wait a minute. Jesus' disciples had seen him walk on water, give sight to the blind, deaf ears now open, lame men were walking, dumb men were talking, healing all manner of diseases, and it's still, matter of fact, Mark chapter 9, verse 9 and 10 said, when they came down from the mountain, he said, don't tell anybody what you have seen and heard until after I rise. Are you praying with me? He told them again, the shepherd's going to be killed. Sheep are going to be scattered. But don't worry, on the third day, I rise. He said to them again, I'm going to be mocked. I'm going to be scourged. They're going to spit on me. But on the third day, I'm going to rise. Yes. Yes, Matthew jumps on the train, told them repeatedly, time after time, time after time. On the third day, I'll rise. Chapter 16, chapter 17, chapter 20. Chapter 26. They said, you destroy this temple, I'll raise it in three days. They said, don't you know it took us four to six years to build this temple? Didn't they know it? He was not talking about the temple of more than bricks, but was talking about the temple of his body. He kept telling them that, don't worry about what you're going through. Hold on for three days, I'll rise. I want to encourage your hearts today. If God is telling you that he's going to bring resurrection in a situation in your life, on the third day, he'll do it. Don't be guilty of doubt and unbelief. The power of the resurrection. So, 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 so why is it so important? I'm glad you asked. What is the practical purpose power of the resurrection. One, he demonstrated the greatest power over death. For a child of God, death is not something we need to fear. He said, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, mortality shall put on immortality. Hey, oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? He demonstrated power over death. John says to us, my father loved me because I lay down my life, but I've got the power to take it up again. He goes on to tell us back in John 10, said, no man takes my life, I lay it down, and God gave me the power to take it up. He has power over death. Jesus was not a martyr, he was a willing sacrifice. Can I get a witness? He decided to die. He would not, could not, would not come down from the cross, stay to save you and for me. 
knowing that he had power over death, could have called down legions of angels. It was all because of the power of the resurrection. Power over death. Let me move quickly. Number two. Romans chapter 1 verse 4 says this. It was the resurrection that declared Jesus to be the son of God with power according to the Holy Spirit. That's important. It brings all the rest of God's word alive because he's now declared to be the son of God with power. John 3, 16 and 17 makes a lot more sense and help to me now. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Verse 18 says, we that believe in God shall not be condemned. They who do not believe have already been condemned because he's now the son of God. He's our savior. Because you and I were sinking deep in our sin, far from the peace of shore, badly staying and bruised in, sinking there to rise no more. All oh, but the master of the sea heard our despairing cry from the waters lifted us. Now safe am I. Got a song now that the angels cannot sing. We've been redeemed, been washed in the blood of the Lamb. All of our sin has been forgiven because Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but because he's the son of God, he's my savior. No longer will I have to die, spend eternity in a lake of fire. I'm a child of God. I'm an heir of God and I join with Jesus Christ because I've been redeemed, because I've been saved. He's the son of God. Yeah. Mark said I begin my gospel by saying Mark 1.1. 1, 1. Jesus is, ministry of Jesus, the son of God. The resurrection made it clear. Mark said, I told you that he had power over all diseases eight times. Five times power over all of nature. Four were demons, but did you know that he got power over death? So death for us is not the final enemy, as many have said. Death is merely an escort which takes us from time to eternity, earth to heaven. The power of the resurrection. Therefore, we can be Steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For know that our labor in the Lord is not in vain. The power of the resurrection, power over death, declared Jesus to be the Son of God. Number three, gives us power to live holy. Romans chapter 6 helps us out. Know that many of us were baptized in Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death, Romans 6, 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also we should walk in newness of life. We cannot live holy for God in our own accord. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 says this, Our sufficiency is not of ourselves, but it is of God. But because of the resurrection, God gives us power and the ability to live holy. Old things are passed away and all things have become new. No matter how awful the addiction, how large the lies, how devastating is the disposition, how horrible, how disastrous, now that we have resurrection power on the inside of salvation, working on the outside with God, all things are possible because we've got resurrection power to live holy. Paul said, when I want to do good, I don't do what I should. Things I should not do is what I find myself doing. Now, because of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, he gives us power to live holy. Sin has no more dominion over us. We can say no to sin and yes to the Savior. Because of this resurrection power on a practical basis, every mother and daughter that's been estranged, every father and son who've been excommunicated can now be renewed, can now be restored. Every marriage that's on the rocks can be based on the rock of ages. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask, think, or imagine. No problem too big, no horror that he can't deliver. He can save from the guttermost to the uttermost because of his resurrection power. He's stronger than crack cocaine. He's stronger than Percocet. He's stronger than fentanyl. He's stronger than any opioids. He's got resurrection power. 
that enable you and me to live holy, no matter how difficult I can pull down everything that raises itself against the holiness of God, bind every stronghold, loose from every yoke, because it gives me power to live holy. Even when I want to do wrong, I confess my sin and call on the name of the Lord. I realize that all of my help coming from the Lord, he sends down power from on high to make me walk right, to make me talk right, give me a mind to set my affections on things which are above, give me a heart to love the things that God loves, hate the things that God hates. He gives me power when I'm weak. Paul said when I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. I call on the name of my Lord and say that he's got a resurrection power putting you in me that I might walk that I might be pleasing in his sight when I cry out to God. He's far from the wicked. Oh, but he hated the prayers of the righteous. He gives me power to live holy. I press to the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm pressing, I'm marching, I'm trying to serve God. All of my heart, all of my soul, all of my mind, he gives me power. When I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. God, I know you can, I know you will. You got the power to live holy, all because he got up out of the grave with all power. He got up, he got up, he's not dead, he's alive. Can't walk this walk by myself. He's a very present help in a time of trouble. He's my refuge in a time of storm. Power over death. He is the Son of God. Therefore, He is Jesus, my Savior, my Deliverer, my strong, my strong tower, my fortress, my way when I'm lost, my help when I'm weak, food when I'm starving. He's my all in all. Everything I need is in Him. Matter of fact, Paul said, death is swallowed up in victory. Even when I'm failing humanly, spiritually, we win. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Family, this resurrection power is within you and me today. All we got to do is access it. Something happens when I call his name. I said, something happens when I call his name. At the name of Jesus, demons begin to flee. Battles get light. Loads get lifted. Mind get clear. Something happens when I call his name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ, you are Lord all by yourself. He gives power to live holy. Helps us to say no to sin. Yes to Jesus. God, I'm weak. I can't do this by myself. He said, and you don't have to. I'm right here. I stick it closer than a brother. Just call on me. You can access my resurrected power. Two more things and we're going home early today. See, see, see. It, the resurrection guarantees our future resurrection. When we've done with the cares of this life, James 4 said life is but a vapor. When this vapor has expired, they'll take us physically to resurrection, Harmony, Arlington, Sheltonham. But the spirit is already gone with the Lord. But some way, somehow, Beyond my ability to explain and to articulate, to philosophize, there's going to be another resurrection for you and me. First Thessalonians chapter 4 backs up what I'm saying. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus shall Jesus bring with him. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel. And with the trump of the Son of God, the dead in Christ shall rise because he got up 
you and I are guaranteed our future resurrection. We're going to get up out of the grave. Somehow the body that has deteriorated is going to be reconnected with the spirit. And there will we ever be with the Lord. And when we've been there for 10,000 years, all bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. I want to see those eyes that look like balls of fire. I want to see the hair that look like lamb's wood. I want to gaze at those feet that look like palace brass as if they've been burned in the furnace. I want him to say, fourth foot and family, well done. You've been faithful over a few things. Sit on down and rest a little while. Oh, when I see Jesus, all of my heartache, all of my trials, all of my pain, it's all be over. Every day's going to be Sunday. Sabbath going to happen. I'll say hallelujah. Bless your name. I praise you. I give you glory. I give you honor. You are worthy. You deserve it. Job said, Job said, if a man die, shall he live again? Yes, we're going to live again for all of eternity. No more sorrow, no more sadness, no more weakness, no more. All of those will be of a past. Hey, I just want to see Jesus. I'm bound for the promised land. Got a heaven in my view. I got one more stop than the train to be at the station. Not only is my and your resurrection guaranteed, we have an inheritance that's guaranteed. I keep waiting for the call from the courthouse, from the $10 million gift from my rich uncle, so I can tie one million to the four foot family and my church has said amen. But if that call never comes, you and I have an inheritance, according to Romans, first Peter, Verse 1, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, we don't deserve it, nor do you. It's because of God's abundant mercy has begotten us a lively hope. How? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. His resurrection showed that he had power over death, declared Jesus to be the Son of God. Gives me powerful holy living. It shows our resurrection and now it guarantees our inheritance. A guarantee is only as good as the guarantor. If you said it, it may or may not happen. If I said it, it may or may not happen. But if Jesus says it, blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, Psalm 103 verse 8 I believe says, God is merciful, plenteous in mercy slow to anger his mercy suits our case abundant mercy has begotten us a lot of hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ because the resurrection is true we got our hope today and my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and his righteousness oh I dare not trust the sweetest frame but on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is but sinking sand I've got a lively hope if it hadn't been for the resurrection, we'd have a hopeless end. But because of the resurrection, help me somebody trying to get to the close. We have an endless hope. Hope is the anchor of the soul. Against physical hope, we believe in hope. And all that God has said. This inheritance is yours and mine. It is incorruptible. Undefiled. Faded not away and reserved. Got your name on it. Because we named the name of Jesus in our heart, we got an inheritance that cannot be lessened, never dull or lackluster. It is incorruptible, undefiled, faded not away. Everything on this side will fade away. The nice house you live in, after a while, needs a new roof. Windows need to be replaced. Nice car you drive, no matter how expensive, over time, requires some repairs. Everything on this side fades. Oh, but our inheritance doesn't fade one degree, one not one iota. It is in. So I come to rejoice today. So I say, God, I thank you that you got up out of the grave early Sunday morning. All power, all power. 1 Peter 5, 7 makes more sense now. 1 Peter 5, 7. I can cast all of my cares for my family, 
for my children, for my business, for my church, for my life, all of our kids on a God that has all power. No matter what the situation, we have hope. God, I give you my loneliness. I give you my aches. I give you my insecurities. I give you my problems. I give you my pain. I give you my body. I give you everything to you because you gave everything for me. When I see Jesus, hey, gonna shout my troubles over. God, you've been so good to me. Every now and then it feels like heaven come down and glory fill my soul. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. Pity my groan. Long as I live, I give him the glory and the honor. The power of the resurrection is able to meet all of our needs today. No worry today. No more stressing. No more fretting. God, I give it to you. We walk in resurrection power. Just because we can't resolve it don't mean it's not able to be resolved. I mean, we can't. But he can. He did it all. For you and for me. Whatever area of your life needs resurrection. But last point, last point, I promise. You've been patient. In order for there to be a resurrection, something got to die. What? See, I, you and I have to die to self if a new self is to be resurrected. Your unforgiveness has to die so forgiveness can be resurrected. Your judgment and spirit has to die so God... Some of you have been hurt, say, I'll never love again. Never say never because Resurrection Sunday can change all of that. In and of ourselves, we can never do this or that. But we have resurrection power. The devil would have some to believe that there's no sense of resurrection. But 2 Corinthians chapter 4 said, Satan, the God of this age, the God of this time frame, the God of this eon, has blinded the minds so they cannot see the gospel of Jesus Christ. We walk today in resurrection power. It don't matter how long it's been dead, be it family relationship, be it business, be it relationship, be it whatever. Jesus can cover all of that. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. We speak life. You ain't going to be sick forever. You're not going to be broke forever. No, no, no. He said, I come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. Live with resurrection hope. Let us stand. We are children of the resurrection. Hold up your head, child of God. Psalm 3, 3 says, he's the lift up of a bow down here. He's our shield. All that we need is in Jesus Christ. What is it that you need Jesus to resurrect today? First of all, if you're not saved, that's the first step. Amen. He died so we could live. He died the worst and horrible death so we could have the abundant life. Yes. What kind of love? Think for a moment today of quietness and reflection. How much Jesus really loves you and me. It, it makes me want to be more of what he wants us to be makes me hush and just be still and know that he is God. What a savior. What a Jesus. What a love. Agape love. What amazing grace. What infinite mercy. What shall I render for all of his blessings? The power of the resurrection. May it live large in your life today. Ask God to heal. Ask God to help. Ask him to guide. If your heart's been broken, he can move you from a broken heart to a blessed heart. He can move you from a stressful heart to a striving heart. If you would trust him, only believe in his resurrection power. I talked to one lady this morning. She said, I want you to see my sister. The doctor said last year she would never walk again. She was walking around the church. 
she had multiple surgeries that they said there's no cure she said I'm well I'm in church on Easter Sunday morning there are miracles in this house the doctor said she should have died at the hospital but that was years ago another brother here had a serious issue the doctor said you are an anomaly you shouldn't have an appetite with all this chemo you shouldn't be mowing lawns with all this chemo but he another miracle resurrection power is available in this house i'm trying to tell you i'm not making this up sometimes god gives us an ocular demonstration so we can see you don't even take faith to see this is paper you ain't got to work he can do it won't he do it yes he will every day i thank god for my healing for this for that for that for that every day i thank him every day soon it'll come to pass He's stronger than the side of nerve in your back. I believe in God for some miracles so that we can see a fresh that he's still able. It wasn't just biblical time. He can do it right now. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever if you trust him. Would there be one today who wants to know this Jesus that you might experience his resurrection power? in your life today you can say you know what I came to Jesus on Easter Sunday of 2023 my life has been changed old things have been passed away all things have become new I got a new outlook on life I got a new perspective I got a new joy I got my stride back would there be one today you didn't just come because it was Easter Sunday out of tradition you came to meet Jesus you read the Bible when they left the empty tomb. She met Jesus. He said, Mary, Mary. She said, Master. First she thought it was the gardener. Then she said, Master, Rabboni, Rabbi. Has he ever called your name? Today, he's calling you if you don't know him. Come home, my dear child. I died for you. I paid it all. Don't let this gift go in vain. Would there be one today? There's at least one. I feel you coming. Come on. We don't stand to embarrass. We stand to embrace. We don't stand in judgment. We stand in joy. Bible said, heaven rejoice when one comes. Come on. Today is your day. All that's going on in the world today, you don't want to put this off. Would there be one today? I just want everybody to know I'm a believer. I'm just coming to testify of a saving grace. Will there be another today? Come on, somebody needs Jesus. We're not trying to put you on the spot. We're trying to get you off the spot. All that's going on in the world today, would you not agree? If ever we needed the Lord before, God in heaven knows we sure do need him now. All the uncertainty issues of life. Maybe you're here today. You already know this wonderful Savior. We invite you to come to be a part of our loving, caring family. We'll walk with you through your victories as well as your valleys. If you feel led to become a part of our family, welcome home. Come on now. We, we receive you with the love of Jesus. Would there be some today? Come, let's go together and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Come on. I know it takes a minute. If you're here today and you don't have a church in the local DMV, Christianity is personal, but it's also corporate. Forsake not the assembling of ourselves together as the body of Christ so we can strengthen Encourage and edify one another. If you don't have a local church home, 
Welcome home. Come on. I, I might be too far away. I, I don't, don't want to hold you too long. I know some of you got dinner plans. But there's going to be another dinner in heaven. We'll see the Lamb of God. I'm looking for one man who said, you know what? I've been putting this off long enough. I need to get this issue settled just in case Jesus comes back. I want to be ready. Who is that brother I'm talking to? Maybe young, middle-aged, or senior. We need mighty men of God to stand on the word of God. Real men do serve Jesus. Can I get a witness? Real men do serve him. Is there one? Somebody said, well, uh, when I get my life straight, I'm going to come. No, that's Jesus' job. You just come as you are. Come on, I'm talking to one man. I know you're here. You didn't get up and get dressed up just to come because it's Easter. You came to give your life to Jesus Christ. You said, maybe I'll do it today. Today is the day. Can I get one brother to walk with me on this journey? Just one. Jeffrey Loud. I didn't know he was in the house. Welcome home, cousin. Got my last name. My people. Would there be another? Maybe I'm talking to a sister who said, I need to come and join this party, be a part of this fellowship. You may come at this time. Please come. Come on. We got to go. Come on. Please don't try to live this life without Jesus. It's too difficult. It's too arduous. Please don't do that. We need help. We all need him. Maybe I'm talking to a millennial who's dealing with the basic core issues of life. Come to Jesus while you're young. So you don't spend the rest of your life digging out of a hole. Come now while you're fresh and conformable. Come on. We got time for one more. Then we got to go. I know it's not easy. Maybe there's a couple that want to come together on Easter Sunday to be a part of our family. We are family church. Family is important. You can help us to model. Oh, we still love you if you're single. Maybe the one that's going to stop you from being single is here. Hmm. On Easter Sunday. Just maybe. Just maybe. He ain't at the club. You do want a man or woman of God. So you don't be unequally young. First man you need to know is Jesus. Let Jesus be your first love. Then he'll send you a second love. Come on, help somebody. We're going to take two more minutes, then I promise. I'm talking to somebody. Somebody's pointing to somebody. I'm pointing to Jesus. Maybe you're out of the area, but just come to Jesus. We recommend a church in your area, wherever you are. Let's get this solved today so you have an eternal security. I got to take a minute in case some of y'all don't make it back next week. So I'm, I, I'm going a little longer than normal on purpose as I'm led. So, Come on. Can I talk to a youth that's young, full of vigor and vitality, but I want to live for Jesus. It's challenging on social media. Don't spend all your time on Facebook. Time to get your face in the book. What's happened? All these social media platforms. 
can be a blessing or a burden. We need Jesus to monitor your social. More concerned than your social links and followings. Your name? Journey. Journey. Welcome home, Journey. Journey starting a new journey. Welcome, Journey. Can we give God praise for Journey? So sometimes it takes a little time. We always try to rush everything. You can't rush everything. Isn't it amazing? We stayed in the club all night, but we don't want to stay in the church all day. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You got mad when the music stopped. Wasn't ready to go. But when my wife used to go to the Black Crystal, before it was time to go, they were saying, find a call, find a call for the alcohol. Everybody would rush to the, get a little spirit for the road. I'm trying to give you some spirit before you get on the road. If you help a brother out, we didn't drink, we were just there for the dancing. My wife was dancing, I was doing what I could. It just, just, just life. It was fun. Being a Christian, you don't have to miss all the fun. The devil doesn't have all the fun. We can have life, but it must be in Jesus Christ. Pray for me, I'm, I'm trying to sit down, but this is so important, so serious. You don't want this moment to pass. While God has your attention, maybe you've been a member for it, but been out of connection. You want to renew your covenant. Come on, renew. Today is a good day to do that, if you feel led. See, 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 see. Welcome home, you know. You know. Yeah. Carolyn Cunningham, welcome home. I, I told y'all it takes a little time sometimes. Since one more has come, is there one more? Maybe you've been going through a lot. We have counselors, we have help. We're here to be a family to help you to deal with this thing we call life. If you remember four foot, you will not go hungry. We got food banks, physical food and spiritual food. We're here to help you. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for your resurrection power. We rejoice. You have power over death. Yes. Your resurrection declared Jesus to be the Son of God with power. You give us power to live holy. You guarantee our future resurrection. You guarantee our future inheritance. And we say thank you. We say thank you. We say bless your name. We give you glory. We give you honor. You are worthy. May we live lives that bring honor and glory to your name. Now unto him that's more than able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy to the only wise God, our Savior, to the only wise God, our Redeemer, to the name that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ, you are Lord, May your name be praised. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. All of God's family said amen. Have a blessed day. Enjoy this day. Have a great week. Walk with the King and be a blessing. Jesus.